minutes of football left with the Cardinals leading the Vikings 27 to 7. St. Louis owns the football first and 10. Let's see if the Viking uh, pride will bring them back and make them start really hitting on defense. This will be a good series to watch Page and Dick White up there, Carl Eller. Let's see if they really begin to knock some. Cardinals have the ball up their own 28-yard line. Jim Hart, the quarterback, gives to Wayne Morris, who's had a big day. 146 yards plus for Morris. 373 total yards after three periods for the St. Louis offense. It's incredible. Jackie Smith was in the game, and he just left. Four-yard pickup by Morris, so make it second and six with the ball at the St. Louis 31. Studwell, the young middle linebacker, is in there now and made a pretty good tackle on that last play. Jeff Seaman has had problems with a calf muscle, and he's resting. Studwell is in the middle. Jim Hart on second and six gives to Morris. Morris breaks into the secondary again. Out to the 45 before Phil Wise made the tackle. Bob Young just took a page and rolled him inside. First down, Cardinals. Well, there's a guy that's taught all the young officials how to drop the flag. Stan Javi, 27 years. He used to drop the flag on me. But he's a good man, he's a just man, and he really helped the younger officials, you know it? Good guy. Hard-working guys they are, too. And Jabby. First down, St. Louis. The ball at their own 44 now. Pitch back to Morris. Morris tripped up by Mark Mullaney. Good play by McNeil, number 54. Oakland 37, Seattle a tough day. 37-0. Raiders. They're tough every week. Somebody said that the natural grass would be a problem for the speed burners on the Cardinal offense. Doesn't seem to hurt them too much. Good thing they're not on a carpet today, I'll tell you that. Second and ten, they lead 27 to 7 already. Hart on a draw play to Morris. And a Viking defense. You gotta face your loved ones. In some cases, your wives. After a game like this, you gotta be darn careful. You gotta play hard. <laughs> your loved ones. In some cases, your wives. After a game like this, you gotta be darn careful. You gotta play hard. <laughs> it's third down. Passing situation for the Cardinals in hard drop. Firing deep. Hit it for Harris. Good coverage by the Vikings, and we'll see. Dwayne Carroll for the first time in a long time. Paul Krause back on the coverage. Let's watch Alan Page for it. Alan Page working on the line of scrimmage. The only MVP that's ever played inside in this league. And he is mad this afternoon, isn't he? He hurls someone to the ground. Dwayne Carroll. There's trouble with his contact lenses there. Looks like it. Manfred Moore standing back at the 15-yard line for the Vikings. Wayne Carroll's second punt of the day. Good high kick. Manfred Moore does not know about the fair catch. <laughs> he gets outside the 20. Steve Niels is the guy who came down and made the tackle. The Vikings take it over at their own 22 with 12 minutes, 11 seconds left to play. Cold night, Bob. Did you put in the Prestone antifreeze? Prestone. Prestone. Who needs Prestone? Prestone, Prestone. You need Prestone. If your antifreeze is worn out or you don't have enough, you could be in trouble. So put in a fresh fill of Prestone, too, to prevent corrosion and freeze-ups. Prestone, Prestone. We need Prestone. Prestone. Prestone, Prestone. You need Prestone. Why are men switching from aerosol hairsprays to Vitalis Super Hold Pump Spray? The pump? Because it doesn't spray any aerosol propellants. The pump? Well, it costs less to use. Save money. 
It's because the pump is stronger. It can hold longer than the best-selling aerosol. The Pump. Vitalis Super Hold Pump Spray. Now with an even finer spray. Why don't you switch from your aerosol to... The Pump. Do, do, do. The Pump. Judd Hirsch guest stars as Rhoda has a new romance. Dinner to a drive-in movie, make out a little bit. Yeah, last night. <laughs> Sensational. Watch Rhoda Sunday night. 12 minutes, 11 seconds left to play. Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota. St. Louis Cardinals lead Minnesota 27 to 7. Minnesota football at their own 22, first and 10. Tarkington is 17 for 27. One touchdown. He throws to Chuck Foreman right in the middle. And Foreman struggles for about eight before the Cardinals converge, led by Mark Arneson. Let's see if Tarkington tries to run Foreman out of the backfield and maybe go to Rashad deep, figuring a double might be on Sammy White. Let's see Rashad's going over to the right side. Second Sammy and two. White. Sammy Johnson spinning into the middle. He did not get the first down. Charlie Davis led the charge by the Cardinal defense. Jankowski's played pretty well against Ron Yeri. Yeri might be one of the premier blockers in football, and Jankowski's been on top of him all afternoon. Less than a yard to go with the ball at the Minnesota 31. Less than a yard to go for the first down, I should say. Clock running with just over 11 minutes left to play now. Mark Keller. Straight ahead, dives over the top for a Minnesota first down. They got it. 27-7 the score. The Cardinal offense dominated the first half, led by Wayne Morris. Jim Hart. A lot of speed. And I'll tell you, they're sort of brassy about it. You know, the Cardinals came onto this field today like it was their ballpark. They played like it was their ballpark. Tarkenton drops. Spins to the outside, now goes deep. He intended for Rashad, he can't get it. Nelson back with it. Ahmad Rashad, the leading receiver for the Vikings, 27 catches, but again, the numbers tell the story. Not a touchdown pass this season. Wayne receiver. Wayne Morris alone has gained 149 yards rushing. Viking total is 101 yards. Morris and Metcalf in the Cardinal backfield have been most second effective. It'll be second and 10 for Minnesota now. Clock stopped at 10.26 left to play. It'll be a draw play to Sammy Johnson. Arneson took the top half. Mike Dawson around his ankles. And it'll be a third down situation for Minnesota. The only reason everybody's so disappointed is because this team has played so well for so long under this man. And it's hard for him to understand today. I'm sure if there was an out and out reason, he'd have it. Third and eight. Very quiet. Targeton almost got hit. A flag goes down and Bob Tucker. Made the deception and got close to first down. Eric Williams made the tackle on Tucker. But back close to where Tarkenton was is a flag. Well, Zook was making a, a, a run around the blocking pattern and almost got to Fran, but I believe it was going to be probably holding back there. Maybe that's the reason Zook didn't get there. And Drive lining up things. Walking back. 9.50 left on the clock remaining in this game. Offense, illegal use of the hands, number 62. Number 62 is Ed White. So it'll now be third and 19 to go for a first down for Minnesota. The ball back at their own 24-yard line. Cardinals lead by 20. Under 10 minutes left in the football game. Fran can no longer dibble and dabble. He's got to get with it now. 
Got 19 big ones he needs to get for a first down, and he drops straight back. Or did for a while, and now he's down. Stopped and sacked by Mike Dawson. Big number 73, Dawson, sacks Tarkenton. It's fourth down, Minnesota now. 6'4", 274. Moves to the outside. Yankowski goes inside. It's a heck of a defensive maneuver. They weren't supposed to be able to sack people. They're playing pretty well at it. Yankowski occupied two blockers. Dawson made the sack. Here is Neil Flavo. A fine kick in the direction of Pat Tilly. And Tilly straight ahead. In Viking territory, back to the 20. Back about a 20-yard return to the 44-yard line, where it'll be first. Workaholic, huh? Somebody's got to get the work out. Many people drive themselves too hard, and it's putting the cost of health care under a lot of stress. Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans have programs to hold costs down, but everybody oh, needs to help. I see you working on a transfer. Huh? Yeah, to that big office in the sky. <laughs> when you overtax yourself, we all pay for it. All of us helping each other. Energy for a stronger America. A lot of the oil and gas under America's land has been found, and our known resources are dwindling. Right now, we're using nearly twice as much oil as we're producing, and considerably more than we're finding. This is why Exxon researchers continue to look beyond conventional sources for more energy, including ways to harness solar power in order to provide more energy for our strong America. down St. Louis in Viking territory again at the 44. 27-7 Cardinals over Minnesota at the moment. Hart is 10 for 12, two interceptions, but only one ball has hit the ground after he's thrown it. Is that an incredible piece of trivia? Gives to Morris, and Morris spins close to first down yardage. About a nine-yard pickup before Tom Hannon made the tackle. Tampa and Los Angeles, 24 to nothing, third quarter. Rams over the Buccaneers. Look at that Deerdorf, number 72. The big right tackle, who is really sort of the counselor at large for the offensive line. He's got to be 285. Has just been one of the super blockers, and really, I think, their leader. I'd follow Nine yard. <laughs> You'd have to. Nine-yard pickup by Morris. Ball is loose, flags down all over the place. Two, three people offside. Tommy Kramer is now warming up behind the Minnesota bench. Can you believe there's been no temper flare up or anything? Uh, no frustration by the experienced uh, Minnesota Vikings who are being embarrassed? For the most part, it's been a very unemotional game. 8.41 left to play. The ball at the 41-yard line as the officials discuss things. Tommy Kramer is the rookie from Rice who had such a great year last year. Offense illegal motion. Illegal motion against the St. Louis offense. We were watching Kramer warm up before the game. He can throw it. There he is. Rice, huh? That's a good release, doesn't he? Comes straight over the top. Surprised we haven't seen more of him today. Bob Lee, the other Vikings quarterback, is out with a hand injury. So it's Kramer and Tarkenton. That comes in motion. Pitches back to Morris. Good blocking out in front. Close to first down again. On the far side of the field, however, is a flag. Look how quickly now the Offensive play gets outside the perimeter. Deerdorf even pulls. Eller's backed off by J.B. Kane. Blair does not show up. And that's just like you're doing it in dummy scrimmage. Like Latin, who was in motion, was going toward the line of scrimmage when the ball was snapped. That's Offense illegal motion number 32. 
was Jerry Latin. 8.33 left to play now. The ball now back at the 46-yard line where St. Louis has it. Make it second down and 12. And Hart hasn't thrown in a while. Second down and 12 for the Cardinals. At the Might now. 46. Studwell on the interception of the Vikings. They had said before that Studwell played against the run very well, but was weak against the pass. Watch Jackson put the heat on. Gets rid of the blocker, Finney, and comes in. Or was that Mullaney? I'm Mulaney. sorry. Good deep drops by the linebackers. And Tarkin has a chance to load it up again. And Tarkin is still the quarterback. Tommy Kramer was warming up before, but it's... Francis Asbury still. Firing to the outside. Picked off. In front of the Cardinal bench by Lee Nelson. The interception of a target and pass by Lee Nelson. The young cornerback from Florida State. The interception swap. Kept the ball too. First play, direct turnover. Third interception by Fran Tarkin. 14 for the year. 8.21 left to play as Nelson comes up with the interception. Inside this new Firestone radial tire is an improved steel cord with 5 million miles of developmental testing. Where once we used 5 strands, we now use 10 strands of steel. 7 around 2 wrapped by 1. A cord construction so important Firestone named a tire for it. Seven, two, one. The new steel-belted radial 721. Now, from Firestone. I had my own way of tackling. I used to grab the whole backfield. Then I threw guys out until I found the one with the ball. When I started drinking beer, I did the same thing. And this is the one I'm holding on to. Light beer from Miller. It has a third less calories than a regular beer. It's less filling, and it tastes terrific, too. I also love the easy opening can. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Well, that's an unusual sight. Seeing the fans leaving Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington before the game is over. We've still got eight minutes and 21 seconds left to play. I thought maybe the natives were just restless and those were fires out in the parking lot. They are restless, all right. This could be the toughest day I've ever seen number 10 have, you know? And he hasn't played that badly. It's not all the quarterback's fault, obviously. First down for the Cardinals at their own 44. Morris, the two running backs. This is Wayne Morris. Again, he gets about five yards, and again, he's stopped by number 55, Scott Studwell. My old teammate, Charlie Weber, is the defensive coach with Coriel's team in St. Louis. They've worked very hard, though, in St. Yeah. Louis. He was also my old teammate with the Cardinals. That's right. He played with a lot of different people. Studwell? Studwell is taking the place of Jeff Seaman we mentioned before. Apparently, he's going to shake it off. Boy, I like his act, though. It's a tough young football player. Seaman, I believe, has come back in. Stedwell goes out. You know, it hurts worse when you're down 27 to 7. Wally Hilgenberg has come into the game now to play in the middle. Played as a regular, of course, here for so long. He and Roy Winston. Morris now has carried the ball 25 times. Picked up 176 yards. Look at another crack. He nudges it up about a yard shy of a first down, straight ahead. You know, Dobler, number 66, uh, he of fame of mustache and all, but he says now he really tries to low-key himself, and he tells the other linemen, uh, <laughs> like, don't worry today, I'm not going to do anything, and they almost look at him like they don't believe him. Let's take a look at the last play. We'll see if Dober comes out the other side. There's Hilgenberg's first defensive play in a while this year. Banks gave him a pretty good ride. And then kicked him. <laughs> <laughs> Cardinals.
Cardinals have called a timeout as Jim Hart goes over to the sideline for a chat. Don't forget, next Saturday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the Dixie 500 on the CBS Sports Spectacular. It's a good race, you all, you know it. Y'all. Y'all. Plus the Pendleton Roundup Rodeo and the world's strongest men competition. That's next Saturday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Conrad Dober, as you can see there on the left side of your picture, he and Doug Sutherland have had some classic battles. In fact, Sutherland's the guy he bit. Yeah, well, he claimed that Sutherland stuck his fingers in his mouth, and he said, what do you want me to do, polish him? <laughs> There's Dobler. Sutherland says he doesn't believe he even cast a shadow. In all fairness, really, they say off the field he's, he's a yeah. fun guy and has a lot of fun with young people and all. He's a good guy. He just bites. He bites. NFL regionals next week. Don't forget Detroit against Atlanta. The Giants will be at Tampa Bay, and so will we. Washington against Philadelphia. That's next Sunday here on CBS. Los Angeles against Green Bay and San Francisco against New Orleans. All that next week. The NFL on CBS, third down and one for the Cardinals. They lead 27-7. Morris swings around to the outside and gets the first down. Still a shutout for the Broncos, 21-0 over Pittsburgh. By the way, in case you're running, uh, you're wondering about records. That was a Cardinal first down picked up by Morris. The Cardinal record is 203 yards gained in one game. That by the great John David Crow. I helped him get about half of those. Did you? Yep. John David ran over me about 12 times that day. <laughs> Morris is pretty close. He just picked up some more, so he's at what, about 185? Something like that. Morris again. This one is going to be called back as somebody jumped offside. Wally Hilgenberg made the tackle. 627 left to play now. 27 7, St. Louis over Minnesota. I thought maybe Mullaney jumped. Vikings offside. Vikings offside. Ben Dreyfus pace it off so that carry by Morris will not count defense number 77 offside Mark Mullaney jumps there he is I'll tell you Banks snapping the ball gets off as quickly as Jim Ringo used to with the old Packers he is not just a, a center you know he actually is a very live offensive blocker coming off that ball First and five of the ball at the Minnesota 39. Arnold's up by 20. They're moving. Latin. Jerry Latin cuts back inside, and it looks like it's close Jerry to another Latin. Cardinal first down. Stopped by Matt Blair. Look They've done a good job on Blair. And look how many people in purple uniforms are standing when the play is over. You can't gang tackle and be standing around, I'll tell you. Here comes Jim Otis, and out goes Wayne Morris. He deserves the applause that he's getting from his teammates right now. He's had one heck of a day. 27-7 the score. Now less than six minutes left to play. Otis moves. Latin. Trying to get around the corner and does and goes out of bounds. Chased out by number 45, Tom Hanner. Jim Otis has been some hand for St. Louis. At over a thousand yards really two, two years ago, came by us when we were on the field before the game and said, "How's business?" <laughs> Don Coriel had some awfully nice things to say about it. But you got to play Morris. He hits that hole, and these offensive linemen love to have the fast-hitting backs. There's no doubt about it. Big Keith Workman is number 62. Second for St. Louis is taking Deardorff's place. That's Dobler, number 66. Conrad looks like he's got bionic arms. It's taped all the way up and down. 262. Hand off straight ahead to Jim Otis, who's down close to another St. Louis first down. Again, the tackle by Tom Hanna. Cardinals have picked up 280 yards rushing. Morris, apparently through for the day, had 182 yards and 27 carries. The thing is, they've attacked everywhere. They haven't just found one weakness and tried to do it. They've probed everybody over there. Otis got close enough to a first down to measure. So the chain gang comes on. 
You know, you don't always play the way you practice. The, the Vikings had a good practice week, and they beat a tough team last week. In Atlanta. And I'll tell you, St. Louis just got on top of them when they didn't get the score on that first drive that the Vikings had. I felt like that everything sagged a little bit. First down for the Cardinals. Ball now to Minnesota 23 yard line. It's like Darby's Rangers. <laughs> Tom Banks. Jim <laughs> Hart is not very dirty, is it? Hart goes on a long count. Otis goes right straight ahead up the middle. Gets a couple. Again, the earliest we've ever seen a crowd depart. Metropolitan Stadium, 37-7, Oakland over Seattle in the fourth quarter. Seattle got 50-something points on on Buffalo, and then Buffalo beats New England today. This is a wild season for this, isn't it? It's hard to predict. Impossible, in fact. Second down now at eight. Otis got two on that last carry. Make it seven. Jerry Latin cutting back inside. Oh. Latin goes inside the 10 to about the 6. Tackle made by Hannon, and he took a pretty good lick from Jerry Latin. Let's see how many Vikings are on their feet. Good tackle here. It saved a touchdown. Watch Conrad. Working on the Thrasher Sutherland, two old friends. Clutching him a bit. <laughs> First and goal for St. Louis at the Minnesota 7. Cardinals already lead, 27 to 7. Jim Otis gets the call. And Otis gets all tangled up and maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, stopped by Phil Wise. Less than three and a half minutes. Here's Dobler again now. The continuing story of the man from Wyoming. Everybody wants a piece of it. I tell you, he's a good football player. Played by McNeil. Scored his first touchdown last week. Deardorff said he fell on it like an old lady. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. <laughs> on second down, Hart calls the draw play to Otis, who cuts down to about the four. Scott Studwell filled the middle. Two minutes, 40 seconds now left to play for Jim Hart and the Cardinals. It's been a pleasant afternoon in Bloomington, Minnesota. They lead 27 to 7. He's earned it, I'll tell you. He was in St. Louis before Coriel when the people were yelling for his hide, too. And Jimmy Hart and this whole bunch have done a heck of a job. They're a team to worry about down the stretch. You bet they are. Third and goal. At the five, Jim Hart looking. He gives to Latin again, and Latin cuts back inside. Comes close. Jerry Latin, Jerry Latin did not quite score. And the Cardinals motioning over to the bench. Joe Jackson made the tackle on Latin. Here's the handoff. Again, like you draw him on a blackboard, isn't it? Introducing the Ford in your future, the new Ford Fairmont Wagon, a new wagon designed for today and the years ahead. The Fairmont Wagon has excellent mileage ratings, but while it is trim and lean outside, Fairmont has almost 90% of the passenger space of most large wagons, and with a seat down can swallow up all this cargo. Yet for all this, the new Fairmont Wagon, as shown, is actually sticker price less than this little VW Rabbit. Test drive Fairmont, the newest better idea from the Wagon Master. Will the insurance fix our chimney? Sure, after we plow through the paperwork. It's different with Allstate. What's different? We have the world's largest team of claim specialists. Don't worry about a thing. They settle most claims like this without estimates. No problem. Allstate specialists are interested in you, not paperwork. I'll call the contractor today. Oh. That was easy. When it takes being different to be better, Allstate will do it. That's a promise from us, the good hands people. Two 
minutes left to play. St. Louis has a fourth down. Looks like about a foot to go for a touchdown. They lead already 27 to 7. You know, with the offense that the Cardinals have, their defense actually has spared a lot of problems because the Vikings have moved the ball at times pretty well, but they're down knocking again. Jones, Otis, and Latin, the running backs. Latin comes in motion. Otis Bates, Burrow straight ahead, did not get in. Middle of the defensive line, rose up to stop him. Jim Marshall, James White, and a bunch of others. Let's see if uh, Otis's foot slips. Now, you're right on the line of scrimmage. Notice how they're down on the two-point stance on the line of scrimmage for the goal line. Straight ahead's all they want to think about. Purple wave came over the top. Here it is again, a different angle. Handoff, handoff wasn't real smooth. A new quarterback for the Vikings. That is Tommy Kramer, a rookie from Rice. Hasn't thrown a pass yet. This would be a tough place to load it up. First and ten in his own end zone. Kramer throws out to Sammy White. White cuts back inside, gets to about the six. Kramer, as we told you before, has an excellent arm. There he is. He's tall, he's talented, he just completed his first pass. Six-yard pickup, make it second and four. As Kramer drops back. Throw. Down the middle to Sammy Johnson. That should be enough for a first down. Well, it was incomplete, I beg your pardon. Johnson did not hold on. Just watch the motion of this young man, though. Sometimes young quarterbacks, especially when they're hot, they got that good arm, they throw it downhill a little bit. It was pretty tough for Johnson to handle. But this young man could do it. Clock stopped with a minute 26 left to play. The ball at the seven yard line. It's third down. That's the time remaining. Cincinnati comes here next week against Minnesota. Almost picked off by Eric Williams. Cardinal linebacker in good position. Young, young quarterbacks, you know, don't really get pressure when they're throwing during the week. He didn't even see the linebacker who was kicked out into that under position. Obviously, uh, the Cardinals are looking for pass, especially young Williams. Tommy Kramer. Neil Flabo now in the game for Minnesota. Will kick from his deep in his own end zone. Pat Tilly is deep from St. Louis. Lock stop with a minute and 20 seconds left to play. You know, Jurgerson's problems when he came up as a young quarterback uh, were that when he would throw the interception, he'd make the mistake of going over and trying to tackle somebody. <laughs> I think Jurgerson had two or three shoulder operations really on interceptions. Happened to name it a couple of times, too. Yeah, that's right. There's Neil Playball. High kick by Claybo and Tilly handles it at the 45, looking down the sideline. Pat Tilly breaks a couple, and Tilly goes out of bounds to Minnesota 30. Cardinals have dominated from the very beginning. Lock is stopped now with a minute and nine seconds left to play. Patrick, tackling is a state of mind. Tackling really uh, is, there's not a lot of finesse with it, and Bud Grant knows that. Uh, tackling, you just run through people, and you get to where you want to get close to them to, to make hard contact. And the Vikings really haven't done that. They're really the shabbiest tackling I've ever seen by a Viking team. Chuck Milton has been our producer. Sandy Grossman, the director. This contest between the Cardinals and the Vikings, which has been dominated by St. Louis. They lead 27 to 7 with a minute and nine seconds left to play. With the playoffs around the corner, I have a feeling we're going to see this team in December. The team in red and white. Jim Otis spins back to the inside and stopped by Scott Studwell. And now we're down to one minute left to play. Two. Quarterback is Bill Dunkers, number 10. The other number 10. Hasn't been a good day, has a friend. He's never been hurt, but I'll tell you, he feels he feels it right now. He is a very professional person. Clock runs away. Donkers 
back to Otis. Otis shakes a couple of tacklers, gets down close to the 20. And that might be the last play of this contest. James White made the tackle. Don't forget, coming up next here on CBS, Brent, Phyllis, and Irv with scores and highlights of all the other games around the NFL today. Cardinal should be content just to let it run out. Bud Grant could have won his 104th game today. So the Minnesota record will drop to five and three. The St. Louis record goes to five and three. Tom, you have to give a lot of credit to all the Cardinals, but certainly Wayne Morris was very, very impressive. I like the St. Louis offense because it is extremely aggressive and it's nasty and it's uh, signs they're gone sometimes. They throw the ball in your face, but I'll tell you, they can play football. There goes Bud Grant. It's going to be a very quiet Minnesota locker room. I don't know. He might explode in that locker room today. Okay. This is Pat Summerall saying so long for Tom Brookshire. Now we take you to CBS Sports Control and Brent Musburger. And the St. Louis Cardinals bounce back into that playoff picture this afternoon with that big victory over Minnesota. Right now, we'd like to check in on the Los Angeles Rams and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That game did not move along as rapidly as Minnesota against the St. Louis Cardinals. And, of course, we will be checking in to see exactly what has happened. I saw Vince Ferragamo report into the game for the Los Angeles Rams, and we'll see how he's doing. They come up to the line of scrimmage, and they've got a chance now to score again. It is 24-0. This is live, what you're watching. Rams lead the Buccaneers right now. That's Ferragamo, the rookie from Nebraska, and they run the sweep right, and the Rams are stopped just short. Number 43 for the Los Angeles Rams is Jimmy Jodat, 5'11", 210. He's a first-year running back out of Carthage. Phyllis will tell us all about Carthage if I ask her, I'm sure. So the Rams have dominated this game. It was a homecoming for John McKay, but Tampa Bay has been completely ineffective. Jeb Blunt was their quarterback in this game. He's been unable to move them. What about Pat Hayden? He threw for two touchdown passes while he was in the game. Larry McCutcheon has gone over 5,000 yards, career rushing. Now again, you are watching live, and this is Vince Ferragamo trying to direct the Rams to his first touchdown as a professional. He's got it. That was number 43 burrowing in there and more wool for McKay on the Tampa Bay sideline as the Buccaneers are still looking for their first victory and they are not going to get it this afternoon. A replay put up by our director in Los Angeles, Tony Verna, and he just got right in there behind the right guard. Irv Cross, the Rams really rolling, but Tampa Bay, what a lowly team that is. Well, of course, they're on the verge now of setting an all-time uh, record in consecutive losses, but... You know, you don't expect a great deal out of an expansion team, Brent, but uh, because everybody's a little disappointed in their performance. All right, now, we're going to have a two-way interview, but uh, Phyllis, who's our friend over here on the far left? Check it in. <laughs> Can I have a close shot of this gentleman, folks? You may recognize him as a farmer, Baltimore Colts, captain of the special teams. And then he went to Atlanta, where he's one of the best right wide receivers they'd ever seen. And now you saw him today out at Giant Stadium, where the Dallas Cowboys beat the New York Yankees. It's none other than the <laughs> strawberry blonde of CBS, Alex Hawkins. If they blonde beat the New dress. York Yankees, oh, did I say you that's how I nerve her every time. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, I was looking at that, that shining face over there and was overwhelmed by him. How are you, Alex? Phyllis, I, talk I to you. enjoy y'all so much. Congratulations on your Emmy today and the whole thing you do. Richly deserve it. Y'all have so much fun. Well, you know, you're part of our team. We, we always joke about these teams and how, way they, how well they play. Well, we're a team here at CBS, and, and on that whip around, you do such a good job every day in broadcasting with Vince Scully. We want to thank you, too. He's redheaded, though. Now, right. But what are you? Listen, we've got a couple of big offensive linemen. You know, we usually talk to quarterbacks, right? Well, we're going to take you now to a couple of guys who do the dirty work. Bob Young and Conrad Dobler, the offensive guards for the St. Louis Cardinals. Gentlemen, welcome to the NFL today. Nice job this afternoon. Bob is 64. Dobler is 66. And, uh, Bob, let's start with you. Why was it so easy today against the St. Louis Cardinals? You really dominated them. Minnesota Minnesota Vikings, I forget who we played today. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I think the team, and we look upon ourselves as the leaders of the team, and for the Cardinals to do good, our offensive line has to dominate and set example for us, the team. And uh, it took us a few games this year to, for us to start doing that. We have done it, and uh, we've been winning lately. 
Hey, Connie, I wanted to ask you, this is Irv Cross there. Connie, you started out awfully slowly with that Cardinal offense. Everybody in preseason polls uh, felt that you'd have an explosive offense, but you started out with a fairly good defensive performance. And, uh, you know, what did it take to bring, bring it all together? Well, uh, Irv, I, I think the reason we started off real slow at the beginning there is because we have a tremendous wealth of backs in the backfield. And at the very beginning of the season, they wanted to try to find the perfect combination in the back the backfield and it was difficult to block for this guy or that guy you got to kind of get the feel of the game they finally after the third game said these are going to be our two backs and that's who we're going to go with and uh, we've been producing with them Conrad, not, did you uh, really score that touchdown on that Monday night against the New York Giants I've been meaning to ask you that question now you can tell us because it doesn't matter uh, that's what they say I did and, uh, <laughs> yeah I did score it and it was quite a thrill in fact uh, right there afterwards I even tried to kick the extra point but <laughs> They uh, stopped it before it got, uh, they stopped the conversion. It was a very exciting moment for myself. Bob Young, how does it feel to be the other guard on the St. Louis Cardinals? We're always talking about Conrad Dobler and his reputation as pro football's dirtiest player. Do you ever feel that maybe we overlook you, big guy, when you're out there? Well, you know, that's easy to do. Uh, it's hard to, uh, hard to push too many linemen on uh, one line. We have five very good ones, and... Uh, it's just hard to get uh, all the recognition for all five when you have so many of them. All I'm right. used to it. Uh, the Strongest Man contest gave me a little PR, so I guess that makes up for it. <laughs> it indeed has, Bob Young, and congratulations to you and Conrad Dobler. Nice job this afternoon at Bloomington against the Minnesota Vikings, and good luck now as you pursue a spot in the playoffs. Thank you very much. You. Appreciate it. And the NFL Today will continue on CBS in just a moment. I was asked to talk about the incredible Black & Decker Workmate. There's almost nothing it can't hold. But the Workmate is so incredible, I'm gonna let it do the talking. The Workmate from Black & Decker and nobody else. When America has a job to do, it reaches for Black & Decker. Let's check in now. A couple of games still underway. The Oakland Raiders are going to win again this afternoon. They lead Seattle big in the fourth quarter, 44-7. And the Denver Broncos bounce back after that disappointment of a Sunday ago when they were beaten by Oakland. They lead Pittsburgh 21-0 in the fourth quarter. And here's the final, the game you just watched, well played by the St. Louis Cardinals, who are now coming on as we make the turn and head for home 27-7 over Minnesota. Tampa Bay, 31 to nothing. We checked in on that game live. The Rams are going to win again today. Kansas City, final score over Green Bay, 20 to 10. The game ball given to ex-Kansas City coach Paul Wigan on a vote by the players after the game. Chicago routed this afternoon by Houston and White Shoes Johnson, 47 to nothing to count there. But the NFC finally scored its first victory over the AFC this year, 20 to nothing. The Lions shut out San Diego. The upset of the day, Buffalo over New England, 24-14. Hooks replaces the injured Simpson and rushes for 156. Grogan tosses four interceptions. Cincinnati hangs tough, beat Cleveland 10-7. Anderson was the quarterback all the way, and again, it was a Chris Barr field goal that won that game. Miami beats the New York Jets by four points, 14-10. Bob Greasy tosses for a couple of touchdowns. San Francisco and Atlanta, another tough game. San Francisco came on in the second half to pull it out, 10-3 the final score. Philadelphia got a couple of touchdown passes out of Jaworski. He also ran for two more. 28-7 the final there. And the Dallas Cowboys roll along. 24-10 was the final score there. So now Phyllis, 
Dallas goes home, and I was just thinking, a week from Monday night, Dallas and St. Louis meet, and what a game that'll be. With that Conrad Dobler and Young, boy, they are tough, aren't they? They've got a great offensive line down Ooh. in St. Louis. They really do. They You've will. got some other news for I us? certainly do. The Dixie Five car, 500. Now, we talked about it earlier today, but it is over now. The Dixie 500 stock car race. Darrell Waltrip came from out of the pack to win it after 266 of the scheduled 328 laps were completed. It was halted first by rain and finally by darkness. David Pearson was second and Bernie Parsons third. Highlights of that race will be seen on CBS Sports Spectacular next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, a little earlier, we told you that five boxing promoters have been asked to pay their back taxes to the state of New York. Combined, they own nearly $400,000, and they're behind for matches they promoted last year. Here's what they owe. Madison Square Garden Boxing, $260,000. Caesars Palace and Caesars World, $103,000. Don King Productions and Main Event, $32,000. That's a lot of money. Good luck, fellas. Fellas, some of the final stats are in now. Morris for the Cardinals, 182 yards. Metcalf gained 83 yards. Gee, that Minnesota defense just did not play well this afternoon. The NFL today will continue on CBS with some highlights in just a moment. Come on, old trademark. Time for your walk. What's the hurry? I know where we're going. To where your family began. With the same Levi's blue jeans worn by this man. Hey, you've come quite a ways, little registered mark. Now that I see these guys by the park dressed in your newest edition, sums it up right there. Levi's sportswear. Trademark, I know what you'd say if you could. Levi's don't have to be blue, just have to be good. Five! Five on the 50 yard line! Hey, Jolly, it was cold last night. You put in the Prestone in the freeze? Prestone, Prestone. Who needs Prestone? Prestone, Prestone? You need Prestone. If your antifreeze is worn out or you don't have enough, you could be in trouble. So put in a fresh fill of Prestone, too, to prevent corrosion and freeze-ups. Prestone, Prestone. We need Prestone. Prestone, Prestone. You need Prestone. Irv, let's check in on the Dallas Cowboys, and then you can ask Hawkins some questions since he covered that game for us. Okay, he was there. Of course, everybody knows by now the uh, Dallas Cowboys defeated the Giants by a score of 24 to 10, and they needed some uh, breaks, though, for their special teams to get on the board early. Here's a punt down here that's uh, muffed and then recovered by a Giant, but then Jay Saldy picks it up and rolls in the end zone for the first touchdown of the day for Dallas, and they took a lead here. The Giants had the ball on the 20-yard line, and best position they've had for a while and precisely the pass is picked off by Cliff Harris and sets up a scoring opportunity for the Viking or for the uh, Cowboys. Staubach going to Richards. He's interfered in the end zone there by Bill Bryan. First down for the Cowboys in the 120 door set goes in. Dallas takes a 21-3 lead here in the third quarter. Bobby Hammond wants to make up for that muff punt earlier and does here as Danny White punts to him. He takes the ball and watch this from the 35 yard line a nifty 36 yard return down to the seven yard line setting up a giant scoring opportunity and Bobby Hammond himself takes it in from the one yard line but the Dallas Cowboys remain undefeated and beat the, the uh, New York Giants 24 to 10. Hawk, how did you see it? Complete domination. No, I tell you the Giants just couldn't come up with the big plays. They really couldn't and the Cowboys just have too much. They went through the game in a very workmanlike fashion but they weren't inspired. They just have so much depth overall or that the they're just, uh, there's not a team in their class, uh, with the possible exception of St. Louis. Huck, why does a franchise like Dallas move ahead? W what do you think are the key ingredients? It starts at the top and goes, it reflects the management from the top and right on down through the coaches and the players. And they also, they do such a good job of scouting and developing players once they get them. And another, a lot of teams give up on players a little too early. They've just got good organization. If you owned a pro football team, would you look first of all for a real good general manager, player personnel director, or a coach? If you could choose one of the three, what would your first choice be? It would be a good general manager would be my first pick, and then I'd go on from there. And he'll find me a good coach if I get the right general manager. But first, you need the good owner. That's right. Would That's you ever like to do that, go from broadcasting into management? No, but I'd like to own a team. <laughs> <laughs> 20 million, we can do it. <laughs> Let's check in on New Orleans and Philadelphia. I'll tell you, the Eagles have got a quarterback, formerly of the Rams. Jaworski's his name. Tossed for two and ran for two more, including this dive over the top. 7-0 after the extra point. 
Now watch this catch by Lush. Thread the needle here, Ron, and he does. The Polish rifle's got him at the six. Jaworski going to the tall man, Harold Carmichael. 74 straight games. Carmichael's caught at least one pass. Now Bobby Douglas forced into action. The blonde bomber because of an injury to Scott. And he had this pass picked off by John Sander, who stepped into the hole. Sander intercepted two for the Eagles today. And here's Jaworski looping another one to Jaworski. And it was 21 to nothing. So now, Jaworski, let's see your second run for a touchdown. Time running out, 28-7, the old bootleg play. And the Eagles roll. Irv, San Francisco, Atlanta. That was a toughie. You know, of course, Hawk, you've watched Atlanta for a long time, and the Falcons have a great defensive team, but they just can't seem to get the ball in the end zone. So the 49ers beat them today by a score of 10 to 3. And let's kick off here in the third quarter. This is the opening kickoff of the second half. Paul Hulfer from San Francisco takes the ball and makes a nice return up here to the 47-yard line. Hawk looks like he had a chance to get more yards there. But on first and 10, Jim Plunkett goes to his tight end, Tom Mitchell. He makes a nice catch there, setting up a scoring opportunity for Wilbur Jackson. He goes in from the one-yard line. That's really all they need is San Francisco 7, Atlanta nothing here in the third quarter. And defense, of course, is the name of the game, Brent, when these two teams get together. Woody Thompson looks like he has a good run here off his right end. His hit fumbles the ball. Tony Renner recovers for San Francisco, takes it back to the 19-yard line. But watch what happens on the next series of plays. Delvin Williams for the 49ers is hit. He fumbles, and the ball is picked up by Andy Spiva of Atlanta. And the only score Atlanta could get was a Freddie Steinford field goal, and the game ended that way. San Francisco 10, Atlanta 3. Hawk, Atlanta's your hometown. What's the feeling down there now? They've come back this year. Brent, I've never seen a transformation in a team since Eddie LeBaron and uh, his, the coaching staff that he selected came into the town. They have turned uh, players that thought like losers, that would want to fight everybody that came in after the games to interview them and things like that. The ghost of Norm Van Brocklin is dead, is what it amounts to. They've turned them into very positive-thinking people. I have never seen anything like that in my life, ever in sports. Think ever. like winners, you two guys. Is that a key for a pro athlete? You always have to be positive, Britton, no matter what you do. But I'm still confused, though, with that Atlanta offense not being able to score any. If they could score 10 points a game, they win a lot of ballgames. Yeah, but they've got a, a very young offensive line. They've got two rookies, a second-year man, a third-year man playing. They really only have one veteran that you could consider, and that's Jeff Van Note. But if they get that together, then the, everything else will fall into place. You know that, Eric. <laughs> Hawk and Irv, Pittsburgh has just scored, but they still trail Denver 21-7. That game now in the fourth quarter. There's a team in Chicago that might be thinking like losers. They got routed this afternoon by the Houston Oilers. 47-0 was the count, and White Shoes Johnson was a key man. Here's the end around. Many of you may have seen it before. He turns it on. Not only that, he gets you down in the end zone, and then he does a little embarrassing act down there on you. And if you're a cornerback, you got to say, oh, do I want to get even with you? But it was not to be for Chicago's secondary. Pastorini had a marvelous day. A lot of time right here. He hit Kenny Burrell for a couple of scores, 85 and 43 yards. Walter Payton was held 79 yards, and he had this turnover right here. Chicago all year has been unable to run against that 3-4. I'm going to ask Irv and Hawk about that. Is Bingham scoops it up and runs back into the end zone. This made it 38 to nothing. Now, third and 12 on the own 11, Mike Phipps replaced Avellini. He smeared for the safety. And that gives White Shoes Johnson one more chance to turn it loose. On the free kick after the safety, he busts right up the middle. And it looked like about half that special team had a shot at him. He got over to the outside. Watch 85 lose a shoe, Schubert. He's the last man who could have caught him. And White Shoes has got one more stunt for us, Hawk. He's going to go up over 10 feet and dunk it over the top. Huck, uh, what about running now against a 3-4? Why should it be different for a team like Chicago? I'm afraid you're probably asking the wrong person. Irv more knows <laughs> more football than I do. Why, Irv told me that you were an expert, Captain Midnight. You used to draw the X's and O's in Baltimore for sure. Well, the difference being, uh, though, that, see, I got to watch a lot of games, but he was playing and then went on the coach. I'm though. sorry. Shula told me you were the poker expert on that team. I apologize, Guilty. Huck. <laughs> the NFL like today Guilty, yeah. <laughs> will continue on CBS in just a moment. All right, let me welcome those of you who have been watching Los Angeles, Tampa Bay. For those of you who were not, the final score was 31 to nothing. The Los Angeles Rams over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Phyllis, we've just received a message out of Denver about the commissioner. And I want to ask Irv and Hawk about this. Roselle's in Denver to talk to Joe Green about Joe Green's verbal attacks and abuse on officials on the field. Pete says he won't take any action until after he meets with Joe Green. Now, how serious is it? And, and I'm sure it happens all the time. Why mean Joe Green? 
Huh? I, I think uh, Mean Joe Green made some statement uh, in regard to uh, him levying a fine on one of the Cincinnati players on a Monday night game for unnecessary roughness or uh, some kind of uh, conduct. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that he leveled, levied a, something like a $2,000 fine on him. Ooh. And Mean Joe Green kind of uh, took exception to that and decided that it wasn't the commissioner's job to do that, that the players might ought to police up their own game, which I'm much in favor of. Or, you know, I, I don't know specifically what the incident is that uh, Joe is referring to, Phyllis, but I know generally as a policy in the league, anytime anybody publicly criticizes the officials, whether it's a player or a coach or anybody in team management, they're subject to some kind of disciplinary action from the commissioner, and uh, that might be Did part either of, of you guys ever have the urge to do it while you were playing? You got mad at an official and you said something maybe you wish you hadn't have said? You got no? mad at him all the time. <laughs> but you didn't <laughs> say it, right? Your mother told you not to say those things. <laughs> Final is in now on Oakland. They beat Seattle 44-7 is the count there. And, Irv, let's pick up the highlights with Green Bay, Kansas City. We haven't seen them yet this afternoon. Okay, Kansas City picked up their second win today, Brent, under a new head coach in Tom Bettis. Of course, uh, Paul Wigan was fired earlier in the week, and they won by a score of 20-10. And it was really Kansas City all the way today. Mike Livingston goes to the air early in the ball game and hits Walter White. An outstanding tight end, and he goes out of bounds to the 14-yard line, which sets up another scoring opportunity for the Chiefs. This time, Livingston to Marshall. He goes in for a score, and they take a 10-0 lead at this point in the game. Mike Livingston hands the ball off to number 14, uh, Podolak, who goes in from the one-yard line, 17-3, Kansas City. On a kickoff here, Steve Odom. Little razzle dazzle takes the ball and hands off to rookie number 34, Middleton. And Middleton goes all the way, 97 yards for a touchdown, but too late, too little. And Kansas City pick up their second win of the year, 20 to 10, or their first of the year under their new head coach. And by the way, Paul Wigan received the game ball from his teammates. That was something, wasn't it? Hawk and Irv, the Cincinnati Bengals also bounced back in the playoff picture in the AFC, as St. Louis did in the NFC. Kenny Anderson was the quarterback today against the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Isaac Curtis with a comeback, playing with that injured leg. He's run out of bounds at the Cleveland 11-yard line. This was a tough, tough football game. They really banged away. Here's Johnson from Ohio State. Touchdown run. 7-0 after the extra point. Brian Seif. Phyllis, he played well after you interviewed him early this week. He hits Reggie Rucker. Run out at the 13-yard line, but it set up this touchdown. And it's your man Seif. Going to go to his tight end, Oscar Roan. Got him at the one. Touchdown. It was tied. And again, it was bar. Oh, how important these field goal kickers are. 10-7, Cincinnati wins. And Irv, what about Miami and the Jets? Miami and the Jets, 14-10 Miami, Brent. They pick up their sixth win of the year, and the Jets, on the other hand, suffer their sixth defeat of the year. And it looked like it was going to be the Bob Greasy Harris show. In the second quarter, Greasy goes to number 82, Duriel Harris, who rips up field for a touchdown. Miami 7, the Jets 3. Greasy again, number 82, Mr. Harris. He goes in for another score. Miami 14, the Jets 3. The Jets try to get back on defense, but uh, the Miami's defense uh, holds the Jets are inside the one-yard line. Dahmer is substituting here, throws a touchdown pass to Barkham. And Miami's defense here does the job again. Darmus, who was in there for Todd, who was injured earlier in the ball game, can't find anybody open, just simply throws the ball away. But too late, too little again, Brent. And Miami won the game 14-10. Irv, the commissioner's office just called. They have not yet fined Joe Green, but the commissioner will talk to him after today's game. Let's check in on the standings right now as we have made the turn. We're starting the NFC East, Dallas Cowboys, and there are the St. Louis Cardinals with that big win today over Minnesota. They bounce back because that wild card spot in the NFC is so wide open. Now, how about the NFC Central? Well, it is always Minnesota again, but Chicago has to be asking itself, if we had just made a move this year, we would have had a shot. Detroit now beat San Diego today, so at 500, they're not out of the wild card picture. And I'll tell you, Minnesota, the way they played today, they'll have to be much stronger just to hold on to that lead. And in the West, as we've got some fine races brewing, the Rams with a one-game lead on the Atlanta Falcons, 500. Who would have thought that in one of these days, Tampa Bay has got to bust loose. San Francisco on the rebound. Over now in the AFC, Baltimore and Miami. And, of course, the story there is Baltimore plays Washington tomorrow night. And how about those Dolphins coming back under Don Shula? That's a good coaching job, isn't it? And New England, what a battle that's going to be. In the AFC Central now, there it is, Cleveland with the one-game lead over Pittsburgh, Houston, and Cincinnati. Talk about a wide-open race. Western Division now, well, it is the Denver Broncos with that big apparent victory over Pittsburgh. It's still 21-7 in the fourth quarter. They are tied with Oakland. 
San Diego, Kansas City, and Seattle. And, uh, Hawk, we never get a chance to ask you if you've got any predictions. Uh, who do you think is going to make it to the Super Bowl? I would say right now it looks like Los Angeles and Dallas. <laughs> They're the best two teams I've seen today. <laughs> You're right. The Cowboys, <laughs> the Cowboys, it's their year. It's their year. And, and that AFC, I never get to see any of the teams, so I really don't know. Okay, that wraps it up for Alex Ockers, Irv Cross, Phyllis George. I'm Brent Musburger. We certainly hope that you've enjoyed the NFL Today on CBS. See you next Sunday, everybody. Have a nice week, and stay tuned for 60 Minutes. The NFL Today.